uh, the boss of HS2 Limited, Simon Kirby's had to apologise for failings of the handling of complaints from residents affected by plans for the high-speed rail line. This after a recent report from a parliamentary watchdog found that HS2 Limited's actions had fallen so far below reasonable standards, quotes, they constituted maladministration. Giving evidence to a committee of MPs, the chief executive officer of HS2 Limited, Simon Kirby, said the firm is learning from its mistakes. I think I'd also like to just apologise to the group as well, actually, to the committee as well, for the report um, before I answer the question any more. Uh, the report does reflect um, the organisation in 2012 and 2014, and, and as recognised in the report as well, a number of steps have been taken since then. All of this comes just hours after the MPs scrutinising the government's HS2 bill published their final report. They recommended a series of changes to lessen the impact of the project, including longer tunnels, better noise protection and a fairer compensation scheme. Is that enough, though, for campaigners that still believe the line shouldn't be built at all? Stop HS2 campaign manager and Kenilworth resident Joe Rukin joins me now. Joe, good to speak to you again. Afternoon. What do you make of uh, the apology of uh, HS2 Limited's Chief Exec Simon Kirby today? Uh, genuine, well, you think? No, no, and, uh, and the committee saw that. The chair of the committee, pretty much straight afterwards, Bernard Jenkins, uh, said that, well, you know, you're all good at promises, but uh, where's your actions? You know, it's basically saying you're all mouth and no trousers. Because Cheryl Gillan, who's one of the Chilton MPs affected uh well, his constituents is affected by HS2. She's on that committee, and she read out a whole list of complaints from MPs that have been sent into that committee that are current. You know, uh, Kirby was saying, "Oh, this is years ago. We've changed. We moved. We're we're a learning organisation." Mm. And Gillan was saying, "No, this is now. These are all complaints that are happening now. You don't listen. Uh, you don't pay attention. Even us as MPs." can't get straight answers out of you and, and, and are fobbed off. What's it like? What do you imagine it's like for the residents? So so this um, idea that they're going to come up with a fairer compensation scheme, what do you make of that, Joe? Oh, we've been hearing that for five years now. Uh, you know, that they say, well, they're not... Actually, the MPs who, who met yesterday, different set of MPs, were saying that it should be easier to get or easier to apply for and it shouldn't be so confusing and, you know... <sighs> In, in the way that it's operated is that if, if you hire a solicitor and you have the money to hire a solicitor, you'll probably get the compensation. But if you're just an ordinary person filling in the forms yourself and trying to understand them, there's a good chance you're going to get turned down. It's not really saying that they're going to make it, that they're going to make it easier. They want to make it easier. And that's the real disappointment from the, the MPs who met yesterday, that after, you know, almost two years of, of hearings, they've come up with recommendations for five, just for five places where they've actually ordered HS2 Limited to do stuff. And the rest of it is just recommendations. They're saying, well, we'd like you to do this. And you know what, forget all, what all these residents have said, you know, these 15, 1,600 people who've appeared in front of us, we trust you. And what's happened today is a completely different MP, set of MPs has said, we can't trust you. Um, that's the problem that we have. Right. Um, you know, whenever you've had an independent set of MPs, like the Administration and Constitutional Affairs Committee that's met today, uh, whenever they've reported back, that sort of body, they've always said, this is not good enough, you know, we, we don't believe you.